Hello Year 9 and welcome to Lesson 4 on Paper 1 of the GCSE English Language Paper. If you haven't done the previous lessons, I really would go back and do those and have a look at questions 1, 2 and 3 first because what we'll be looking at today is um, finding out whether you can successfully answer question 4 on the language paper. So the first thing I'd like you to do is think about the skills that you've used so far for the first three questions. And remember the good thing about this exam is the question stems always stay the same. So question one was select four details. Question two was how has the writer used language to describe blah blah blah. And question three, how has the writer structured the text to interest the reader? So just pause and think about the English skills that you've used in order to successfully answer those questions. Okay, and so hopefully you will have recognised that the things that you've done so far in order to answer those three questions is you've used the skill of being able to select evidence from the text, to find the right quotes to back up or support the question that you're answering. That's assessment objective one, select evidence and identify explicit and implicit information. Um, you for question remember question one is just select and retrieve so that's all you've done for question one for question two then you've had to use a combination of AO1 and AO2 so you've got your evidence but here you've also had to explain the language so AO2 is explain comment on and analyze how writers use language to achieve effects and influence the reader using the relevant subject terminology so you've got your quotes you've explained the effect of them and you've tried to identify some language devices as well like verb or simile or personification. Question three again is looking at um, AO1 selecting evidence in AO2 but specifically structure and effect. So now we're explaining and commenting on the structure and how that's been used to achieve effects. Okay so the good news is when you come on to question four you're using pretty much the same skills with the addition of one new one. So you'll be selecting your evidence, you will be explaining the intended effect of those words and phrases, you'll be using language terms in order to identify um, language devices, um, punctuation, sentence structure, possibly even comment on the structure of the text. Um, and, you know, the key thing again is explaining the effect. So the good thing about this question is there's very little new to be learned. You just have to understand what the question wants you to do and the best way to answer the question. So question number four is a long winded question, I'm afraid. I call it the Bob down the chip shop question because it's framed around a quote that's completely made up by exa an examiner, but pretends to be, you know, a student that's read it. So for our purposes, I've created a question for using the Explorer text again. So it says, focus this part of your answer on the second part of the text from line 28, it was dark to the end. A student, having read this text, said, the writer describes the plane crash in a very exciting and dramatic way, but she also vividly captures Fred's fear. To what extent do you agree? In your response, you could, write about your impression of the drama of the plane crash and Fred sphere, evaluate how the writer has created these impressions and support your opinions with reference to the text. Okay, if you have a look at the mark scheme there, I've given you the level three mark scheme because that's a realistic one to start aiming for. Um, this question is worth 20 marks. So for a level three, you're going to gain somewhere between 11 and 15 marks. And if you have a look at the bullet points again, Ignore the first one, but just note that um, the other three bullet points are what we've already talked about. They're the skills that you have already used for question one, two and three, and which you've been taught in English now, you know, since you arrived in year seven. So we've got understand the writer's methods, methods there instead of language or structure, because it's including both of those things. So, um you know, it might be a verb or a simile, or you might notice some foreshadowing, or you might want to talk about the use of exclamation marks. All of that is coming under the umbrella of methods there. Very often students forget that bullet point and they don't use any terminology, but it's really important that you do. Um, bullet point number three then is select a range of relevant textual references. So you're picking your good quotes to support your answer. 
and um, the final bullet point is makes a clear and relevant response to the focus of the statement so basically just answering the question the made-up quote from the student you must make sure that you include the key words that are in that um, quote and that's what you're focused on so the only real really new thing here is that top bullet point evaluates clearly the effects of the reader and even effects of the reader you've been doing that haven't you you've been explaining the effect of particular words and phrases so we're introducing here AO4 evaluates texts critically and supports them with appropriate textual references so in a moment we'll have a, a look at what what it means to evaluate and what kind of words and phrases you need to include so key points for question four to remember then is that it's worth 20 marks and that's a big big deal it's a 40 mark paper so this is worth um uh, all the same marks as all the other questions combined it's worth half the marks on that reading paper um, we do sometimes advise students to maybe tackle this question first although the paper is designed to work up to it if you have problems with your timing in an exam situation and if you sometimes run out of time um, if you do that for question four it's really disastrous absolutely catastrophic if you're losing that many marks and so you could actually argue in reverse that if you do question four first you've had a look at like the whole text pretty much it asks you to look at the second half but you know you, you've had to have a look at the whole text to to judge your answer and then perhaps because you've been using all those skills perhaps answering question two and question three is slightly easier and you might even be faster at it because you've done much of the thinking already so it's basically a longer version of question two, the language analysis, covering the whole or a different part of the text. It's usually the second half from the second half to the end, but not always. So be careful. Uh, the only difference is that you're asked to respond critically to the statement and create an argument. So basically, you're looking for quotes, language terms and the, evalu the vocabulary of evaluation and judgment. So it's that vocabulary of argument and judgment that we're going to look at now. Um, I've included this slide and hopefully your teachers have as well separately because it's really, really handy for you to um, print out. It's basically creates a nice little knowledge organizer or writing frame to help you use the right vocabulary for your answer. But you can see that the, the three boxes I've picked out in that pinky color then are where you're making an evaluation, you're making a judgment. So you could start right away in your points by um, perhaps making it sound as if you've spent ages considering like a rank order you know what is the most important thing in your opinion what's also of primary importance what else would you say was significance also worthy of note interesting so those words and phrases suggest that out of a big pile of things you could have talked about you have evaluated and you have selected the top three you haven't got time in the exam to sit there and you know stroke your beard and, and decide which is actually the most important one but by using the language of evaluation it makes us it makes your um answer sound like it's very considered doesn't it like you have evaluated and you've picked the best one you can do a similar thing with your evidence as well so when you're introducing your quotes by saying you know a good example a primary example a perfect illustration a particularly good example of this again it's the language of evaluation it suggests that you had lots to choose from but you've understood that that one was the best the most significant mainly it's going to come through in your explanations of effect though and just by um, making sure you've got a good range of adverbs at your fingertips wonderfully aptly perfectly neatly brilliantly concisely I don't use too many of these because you sound like you're a bit of a uh, a crazy crazy fan of English exams um, but by you know sprinkling them in your exam in your answer it again gives the impression that you have very carefully considered and that you've evaluated the effect on the reader okay so I've got a model paragraph from a completely different text and a completely different um, question now this was taken from an extract from 1984 and the question was something to do with an unpleasant view of the future you had to evaluate how the writer had created this dystopian world 
Um, but what I want you to think about is the colour coding. There are four different colour co colours in the text here. Um, so think about the four different bullet points on the uh, mark scheme then. We want language terms, we want quotes, we want evaluation, and we want to explain the effect on the reader. So which colour is doing which job? One of the most effective ways in which the writer creates an unpleasant view of a future world is through his description of the weather. A particularly good example of this is through the description of the wind being vile and blowing gritty dust. The adjectives make the weather sound awful, especially through the kinesthetic image of gritty dust. The reader is able to perfectly imagine the harsh feel of the scraping of the grit in their eyes. And vile suggests to me that the wind is very cold and hard. Therefore, all well effectively conveyed that this future world was an unpleasant one. So that's a kind of level three style that we want you to be aiming for today. OK, so we're going to have a go at answering the question now. And I've created a question to link to our text, The Explorer. So using the same text again. Um, the first thing I want you to think about, though, is that the question tends to have two focuses. Um, and you need to identify those two focuses first of all. And I've done that for you here. I've, I've colour coded them in green and purple. So again, our question is focus this part of your answer on the second part of the text from line 28. It was dark to the end. A student having read this text said the writer describes the plane crash in a very exciting and dramatic way but she also vividly captures Fred's fear. So those are our two focuses then, exciting and dramatic and vividly capturing Fred's fear. So ideally you wanna start off by writing, you know, about two paragraphs talking about exciting and dramatic and again about two paragraphs on the second part of the, of the um, questions focus on Fred's fear. Uh, and that's what we're going to start off by doing then. Make sure you've got two different colour highlighters or two different colour pens to underline. And um, again, hopefully you've got a printout of the text in front of you that should have been um, separately attached on class charts. I'll read the text through for you and I want you to, um, you know, swap colours or do one colour and then the other by pausing the video. And, and pick out as many good examples as you can from the text of the plane crash being exciting and dramatic and examples where Fred seems very frightened in the text. It was almost dark when Fred began to worry. The pilot began to belch, first quietly, then violently and repeatedly. His hand jerked and the plane dipped suddenly to the left. Someone screamed behind Fred. The plane lurched away from the river and over the canopy. The pilot grunted, gasped and wound back the throttle, slowing the engine. He gave a cough that sounded like a choke. Fred stared at the man. He was turning the same shade of grey as his moustache. You all right, sir? He asked. Is there something I can do? Fighting for breath, the pilot shook his head. He reached over to the control panel and cut the engine. The roar ceased. The nose of the plane dipped downwards. The trees rose up. What's happening? asked the blonde girl sharply. What's he doing? Make him stop! The little boy in the back began to shriek. The pilot grasped Fred's wrist hard for a single moment, then his head slumped against the dashboard, and the sky which had seconds before seemed so reliable, gave way. Fred wondered as he ran if he was dead, but he thought death would surely be quieter. The roar of the flames and his own blood vibrated through his hands and feet. The night was black. He tried to heave in breath to shout for help as he ran, but his throat was too dry and ashy to yell. He jabbed his finger into the back of his tongue to summon up spit. Is there anybody there? Help! Fire! he shouted. The fire called back in response. A tree behind him sent up a fountain of flame. There was a rumble of thunder. Nothing else replied. One thing to be careful of here, there are lots of examples of the other children on the plane being frightened. So just make sure you don't select any of those quotes. It's got to be relevant textual evidence. Um, make sure you're really focused on examples that Fred um, is frightened. So how does your selection of evidence compare to mine? Um, you can see that I've colour coded and I've picked out a range of things to show drama and excitement of the plane crash and also that Fred is really frightened. So if you want to borrow any of the examples that I've colour coded, you can add those to your own annotations. 
Okay, the next thing we want to do is we want to make sure that we don't ignore that second bullet point in the mark scheme. And that second bullet point is all about methods. I'm just scrabbling around trying to find it so I can read it properly. Uh, so the second bullet point is shows clear understanding of the writer's methods. Okay, so I've put a few words and um, technical terms here um, and you might think of others. So don't worry if you're thinking of something and it's not on the list. That it's not an exhausted list it's one to get you started and help so look at you know blank out the rest of the text now you're only focusing on what you've color coded and just spend a little bit of time trying to identify a range of language devices language terms that you can apply to it and you might also start thinking about the effect so for example in my model paragraph in a minute I've picked out the powerful verb raw and also um, ceased OK, so you can begin by thinking, well, what's so significant about that? How does roar and ceased make the plane crash sound exciting and dramatic? And jot your ideas down on your annotated text. OK, I've got my quotes for the two different focuses of the question. I've got my language devices now. I've begun to think about the effects. So what I need to be doing is making sure I'm thinking about evaluation now so remember print this sheet out if you can uh, it should have been attached separately on class charts and it's basically working as a writing frame so I could start by saying in the extract the most significant way in which the writer makes the plane crash sound dramatic and exciting is blah 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 I could then give my first evidence by saying a successful example of this would be blah 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 I could talk about how that quote wonderfully or perfectly or brilliantly has a particular effect on the reader remember you will get like a, a, you know to to, to um, look at layers of meaning and different interpretations is a fabulous thing to do in the exam so if you're talking about a quote always look for an alternative interpretation it could be perhaps maybe on the other hand and remember it's all about the reader response isn't it so think about all the different verbs that you could use to explain reader response think feel know understand realize sense predict question empathize you know the list is almost endless but think very carefully about that particular word and what that particular word or phrase is doing to your reader and then we're going to put uh, I'm going to do one paragraph for you so you can get the style again Okay, so the, here is how I would begin my answer, and you can see that I've colour coded it again, and I'm 100% sure that I've got the four different things that I need uh, to be successful in this. So I've got, without a doubt, one of the most important ways in which the writer makes the plane crash sound very exciting and dramatic is through the use of auditory imagery to describe the sounds the plane makes. First, she uses the powerful verb roar to describe the sound of the engine. This is particularly effective as the reader will associate roar with a loud deafening noise inside the small plane, as well as linking it to emotions of anger and pain. However, as the pilot cuts the engine, the roar ceased. This is success oh, this successfully conveys to the reader the immediate absence of the noise of the engine and how that would be even more dramatic than the previous roar, as with the engines now dead, the plane will surely crash. OK, so again, see if you can just identify the colour coding that's being used there and really think about how this is, you know, a slightly different style from a normal question too. OK, now it's over to you. Remember, this is a 20 mark question. You want to be writing about two sides of A4 for this one. So what I would like you to do and to email directly to your teachers is I'd like you to write four paragraphs in total. Two, looking at the drama and excitement of the plane crash and two, looking at how Fred's fear is um, conveyed. I've given you four sentence starters if you need them and you've also got the writing frame to help you as well so make good use of that and start practice with those evaluative terms um, you know on the uh, on the whole superbly wonderfully. So your four sentences are going to be another way in which the plane crash is made to sound dramatic is the writer also makes the plane crash sound exciting through the use of one of the most important ways the writer conveys Fred's fear is, and the writer also highlights 
the fear Fred is experiencing through. So you can tinker around with those a little bit. Um, but remember those four ingredients. We want the evaluation. We want the explanations of effect. We want some technical terms in there for language or structure. It could be sentence um, terms. So you might want to be thinking about the use of individual bits of punctuation. Uh, quotes, if I haven't already said that. And remember to use the words of the question. And you can see that even in my sentence status that I've given you, I've begun to underline the words of the question. So if you are using um, a computer to type up your answer, you could colour code one or all of your paragraphs, if you like, before you send it to your teacher in order to um, prove that you are really focused on the skills that are needed for this question. OK, so good luck with that. Send that one directly to your teachers when you're finished. OK, your final job then is to complete this um, little revision sheet that uh, we started in question two, but I sort of forgot to ask you to do for question three. So um, next week you're going to be working much more independently with a completely new text. So if you can create this little revision um, sheet for yourself and you can have that with you next week while you're answering the question you're thinking about the question stem remember the questions stay the same the marks available roughly how much to write what to include um, and what the assessment focuses are what the, the key things in the mark scheme are so fill that in, in as much detail as you can in order to help you next week <laughs>